Let us pray. Almighty Father, we thank you because you are God and you alone is worthy. We thank you for this great opportunity you have given to us again to be in your presence. The day you have made being the 24th of August, 2023. But we thank you for giving us this privilege. Thank you, everlasting King. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today we want to look into the daily dynamite and uh, our topic for today being Thursday, 24th of August, 2023 is Who is the greatest? Who is the greatest? And uh, we want to look in the aspect of the anchor verse Luke 22, 24 to 30 which the man prays is 22, verse 24. But we want to look on the verses till 30. He said, An argument broke out among the disciples as to which one of them should be thought as the greatest. Jesus said to them, The kings of the pagans have power over their people, and the rulers claim the title, Friends of the People. But this is not the way it is with you, ladder. The greatest one among you must be like the youngest, and the leader must be like the servant. Who is greater, the one who sits down to eat, or the one who serves? The one who sits down, of course. But I am among you as one who serves. You have stayed with me all through my trials. And just as my father had given me the right to rule, so I will give you the same right. You will eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and you will sit on thrones to rule over the twelve tribes of Israel. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Our study, the word study has said the topic before us today is, is just like a question that deserves an answer. And the key word of this question of identity is greatest greatest and the word greatest is a superlative of the word great something that is great something that represents a high the highest value a great a permanent over others often used sometimes in titles from this we can deduce that the identity of being questioned here is that of a title or rulership now from our test where we just read jesus was having a last moment when his disciple came. Even at the moment he was preparing to be crucified. He was why he was treated the last supper and they began to argue among themselves. Who is going to be the greatest? Am I one? One I want to be the greatest. They were arguing, suggesting many things. One, they thought Jesus was going to be a political head. And therefore, they wanted a higher position for themselves. That was what was coming to their mind. They were arguing that they think of each person higher and more important to the cause than the rest of others. That without them at the head, the cause will be crucial failure amongst other reasons. Now, but Jesus diffused these thoughts by saying this statement. Let's look at Luke 22, verse 26. And he says to them, But this is not the way. It is with you. Now that the greatest one among you must be like the youngest. And the leader must be like the servant. That was what Jesus was telling them. <laughs> Being younger here is not, Jesus was not literally saying that uh, for you to be a king or for you to be in a higher authority, you will be a shark. No. But it meant that in the heart condition. No children, the heart is soft. When you beat a child and you think that, that child we know go out you see him coming back to that person back again showing love so children are not like an adult who have evil thoughts in their heart in another synoptic john chapter 13 Jesus took off his outer garment and tied a towel around his waist and started washing the disciples feet what a humble character what a humble character the same jesus took the bread at that moment said this is my body this is my blood, which I will shed for you. This is in the presence of me. But the disciples 
The mind was not on that. What they wanted was, I want to be the first. I want to be the first. Jesus is saying it's not important to me. Among us, we want to know who is going to be the greatest. So they are just about themselves. Self, self, me, 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 me. When their master is about to face a trial, instead of them to encourage him, instead of them to do things, you know, to make Jesus. Oh, but no, the mind was about themselves. The first time the disciple were arguing about who is going to be the greatest among them. Let's look at Mark chapter 9, verse 33. Mark chapter 9, verse 33. They came to Capernaum. And after going in, Jesus asked his disciples, What were you arguing about on the road? But they would not answer him because on the road they had been arguing among themselves about who was the greatest. They were eager to know the greatest. They hunger about who is going to be the greatest. So they were working with Jesus in Capernaum and their mind was, I want to be the greatest. And when Jesus asked them, they wouldn't say anything. Jesus was the one who was casting out demons. Jesus was the one who was, you know, healing those who are sick, raising those from the dead to become alive. He was the one that fed the 5,000 men. He's supposed to be the greatest, but he made himself one rich among others. He humbled himself. And Jesus before them took a child and made him stand in front of them. He put his arms around him and said to them, Whoever welcomes in my name, one of these children, welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me, because not only me, but also the one that sent me. Jesus was trying to, you know, give them all those why they have been working with Christ. All those why they have been working with God. All those why Christ being the God, trying to show himself, to humble them, trying to give them characters. That is expected of a child, a humble servant. All those uh, Christ has been telling them about it. But you know, it's just like when you are telling a child to do something, at the end of the day, you see that child doing another thing. That was what the disciple was doing. They exhibited that character. It seems that all what Christ taught them, they didn't put it into practice. All they needed was who is going to be the greatest among us? Can we know? I, I, I. But Jesus, who's supposed to be the one, made himself humble. He humbled himself. Whoever welcomes me, one of these children, Jesus was just speaking, using a child as an example. Jesus said, Who is the greatest, the one who served the least among us? This was not only the place they argue about that greatness. We move to Luke chapter 20, from verse 20 to 24. Let's look at Matthew chapter 20. Matthew chapter 20, from verse 20. The 24. Then the wife of Zebedee came to Jesus with her two sons, bowed before him and asked him in a favor, What do you want? Jesus asked her. She answered, Promise me that these two sons of mine will sit at your right and your left when you are king. Jesus said to him, You do not know what you are asking. Can they drink the cup of the suffering that I'm about to drink? We can. They answered, you will indeed drink from my cup, but I do not have the right. No, Jesus was trying to tell them that what he was about to pass through, uh, that, that they can't stand it. But look at these people. The most important thing about them is who is going to be at the left and the right of Jesus when he becomes the king. The wife of the Zebedee took his two sons, James and John, and brought them. Say, Lord Jesus, please, Master. I want to ask you for a favor. And what is the favor? He just asked her. And she said, please, master, can my two sons, one of them sit at your right and one sit at the left? Can you imagine? Can you see? What the hunger is the heart of men. And this day, everybody is pushing, everybody is making an effort to be the first. Everyone wants to be the greatest. The kingdom of God is far from the church. They don't want to think about the kingdom anymore. They want to be the first. Everything about them is, I want to be the higher. I want people to respect me. I want people to put themselves before me. I want people to greet me. That is the heart of these days. And that is not what Jesus 
needs in the life of every Christian. Praise the Lord. Now let's look at verse 25. Verse 25 of Luke chapter 22. Verse 25. And it says, Jesus said to them, the kings of pagans have power over the people and the rulers claim the title friends of the people. Friends of the people. What life? The, 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 the definition of greatness in the world. That was what Jesus was trying to say. The definition. When someone is greatest in this world, they see that person as the person who is the highest authority. You are to respect that person. You are to honor that person. You are to bow before that person. You are to give everything to that you, you are to serve. You are to serve. You are to serve. When one has sent a person of greatness, people under him serve them. When people get to the top, they tell people what to do. They claim authority over the little ones. Jesus says, that's the way of the world. What? They call themselves friends of the people. During the days, they claim to be friends of the people. But their interest is what they will get. So they take the title claiming to have helped the people you see people in the top of credit misusing the opportunity and doing a lot of harm in the kingdom of god listen to this if you possess an office of greatness authority you are meant to give to someone to receive someone you are the one to give you are meant to give. verse 26 says but this is not the way it is with you now that the greatest am, one among you must be like the youngest and the reader must be like the servant. What wonderful. I am expected to be a servant. As a pastor, I am expected to be a servant. As a child of what you are, you are expected to be a servant. You must people, you must show them the way. But look at here. Some people may be seen among us the greatest one among you be the youngest and the reader must be like the servant this is expected every part of god do you as a reader must be a servant you must serve the people you see people in high class those in authority of greatness looking down on the little one some will say do you know how many years i've been in the position do you know my years in the ministry do you know my commitment you see them they expect you to serve them to honor them even when Jesus is the one looking up to, served us, died for us, showed himself humble himself, you know, was living the life of a, 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 a normal man. What a wonderful Christ we have. What a, what a wonderful God gave to us. What experience do you have? They are still young ones and servants, they are made to serve. This is but Jesus was not in support of this. Rather, he told them that the standard of the king is the greatest among you. Let him be the rest. Ye, he should. You will become a greatest. You will become the greatest when you consider yourself the least one. And that includes humbleness. That's how it works in the heavenly kingdom of God. Verse 27, and it says, Who is greater? Jesus was now trying to issue a question to them. Who is the greater? The one who sits down to eat or the one who serves? The one who sits down, of course, to them. But I among you as one who serves. Even Jesus himself was still serving them. Wash their feet. Leading them. Showing them the way. Because he is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus was humble enough to serve. He didn't see himself as the greatest. Jesus was the greatest of all. We all know that. He made himself the risk among anyone just to save you and I. Just to save you and I. So it's important for us to know that it has a force as Christians to humble ourselves. Let's forget about who is going to be the greatest. Let's forget our eager of self, self. To satisfy yourself. To be higher, higher. That has been the goal of everyone. I want to go higher. And you see the youth today. The youth are getting to go higher, to buy cars, to drive, to move higher, to live a, 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 a life that is not worth it. You no, know, get even at the age of 11 years, you see a child trying, making every effort to be a billionaire. 
goes to work he can't even learn work he just go there few months, just out his line finish you know they want everybody wants to be higher i want to be the first i want to be on top without looking at the aspect you can, without looking at what christ has done humbleness is the part of us as children of god humbleness he was beaten that you and i may not suffer he was accused wrongly for us not to be accused he passed through on the cross for us to be saved he did all this for you and i he humbled himself someone who is full of authority he has the right to command angels for him in philippians chapter 2 verse 5 to 8 because of our time say if you must be the greatest then you must humble as christ He's still today. Christ is humble. He showed himself. He humbled himself. Even when he is, when he is God, he humbled himself. He bring that himself, showed himself that people may have access to him. See some men of God today. You can't even have access to them. You can't have access to them. If you, you, you see the man of God when you want to see him, or you, you wait for one week or two weeks. But Jesus made himself availability. Humbleness. It requires that so greatness requires humbleness and service today some youth are not even ready to start but they want people to serve them just as i have said before humility and service always confess in the kingdom of god that is the first thing humility and service humility and service confess before exaltation in the economy of god that is the first thing you must humble yourself you must serve before you'll be exalted if you want god to think higher of you it's not by beating your chest. It's not by going around a you know, pastor like I am. Now, it's when you serve. Give for the word of others. Jesus deserves deserve to be served. Jesus is the greatest among us. He deserves our service. Yet, he made himself the risk among others. What is the reward of serving? So when you look at it, our anchor verse says, Now, there was a dispute among them as to which of them should be considered the greatest. Now, if you look at it and look at uh, uh, the, the, the level of the world we are today, you see what is happening in our country. At this point, just today being 24th of August, you see what is happening around our country. Everybody is trying to embezzle the money, working to be on top, living what Christ has kept for us. The reward is here. You will receive a reward. When you read at the verse of 30, you say, and it says, verse 30, say, you will eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and you will sit on the thrones to rule over the twelve tribes of Israel. What a wonderful crown. What a wonderful privilege. That is the reward of one who will himself, who will seek Christ, who will do the will of God, who will seek Christ, who will live a life as a Christian. That is a reward of us. God serve you by giving his own son to die for you. God serve you by giving his life to die. It's important to serve him in humbleness. I pray that God give you the grace to serve him. Let's pray. Oh God, our head in ages past, our hope for years to come. A shelter from the stormy blast and a internal home. Our God, help us that we may serve you. Give us the grace to humble ourselves in the service. We want to follow your way. We want to follow your footsteps. Help us in a time like this. In Jesus Christ's mighty name. We pray. Remember, before you go, bear it in mind that our food for our thoughts said, Whoever will humble himself will be exalted. And our prayer say, Lord, say after me, Lord, give us the grace to be humble in all our dealings. In Jesus' name, Amen. God bless you. I hope you are blessed by the word. Join us tomorrow on the daily dynamite